going on everyone? Tomas here bringing you another video. I hope your day is going great. Uh, thanks for clicking and tuning in. Today is another segment of the series I have going for dividend investing. For those of you like myself who just can't get enough of these dividends. Whether you like this regular income, you know, this cash flow that dividends bring with them, or maybe you just like the signal of good financial health for the business, then this video will find you well. Today we're briefly going to cover bonds, but then we're also going to talk about bond ETFs, okay, which these are possibly the safest addition that you can have to your portfolio for a healthy income. Make sure that if you enjoy this video, if you learn something new, then smash that like button down there for me, give me a thumbs up, as well as consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. I appreciate that a lot, guys. So now when it comes to investing, you might be wondering, you know, for starters, what exactly is a bond? Well, no, okay, a bond, it's not some sort of glue, okay? Uh, it's not what you need to post in case you get arrested, okay? What a bond is, it's a fixed income investment instrument. A bond is basically a loan that a government, even a municipality, and a corporation borrows in the form of a bond, and then the lender receives the payment in full upon a selected maturity date. Now, obviously, being a lender, you know, you want some sort of return on your money, right? Or else it's not really worth your time. Bonds offer something called a coupon rate. And this is basically the interest that also gets paid to you on the selected maturity date. Now, it is possible to buy bonds, you know, and then sell them and get a capital gain there. But uh, most people generally invest in bonds for income, okay? And this is via the interest payments. These entities we just talked about, so governments, corporations, they often need money to um, fund things, to buy things, and to operate and even expand business. So they use bonds to borrow these funds. They need a lot more money generally than a bank is willing to just fork up. So issuing bonds allows them to gain access to this larger market of individuals who are happy to become creditors for the business uh, for not a guarantee, but a very safe return. Now, it's not always safe. People tend to mix up risk with volatility, volatility being how the price fluctuates on a certain item. But um, government, usually it's seemed as a bulletproof investment, okay? If your government can't pay back its creditors, then there's a really serious problem there. Government bonds are backed by the federal government, okay? So these are called treasury bills or T-bills, and they range from about a maturity date of one year to 10 years. And although these tend to have a lower rate, um, these are generally your safest um, investments opposed to things like GICs, which are guaranteed investment certificates, or in the States, you have a CD, Certificate of Deposit. In case of a bankruptcy, anything like that, after everything's liquidated, so your assets, all your real estate, and that's sold, then bondholders are next in line to receive payments. So this generally, generally is going to be a very safe investment. Bonds are way less volatile than stocks, so you may have heard of the common rule of thumb from way back um, called the 60-40 rule. This rule is basically that the average investor should have about 60% of their portfolio allocated to stocks and equities and 40% into bonds. This helps reduce the amount of risk in your portfolio, ensuring that you're always getting regular payments. Uh, but personally, like interest rates are a lot lower these days. So me, myself personally, I don't follow this rule. With 40% bonds, you're really giving up a lot of returns just to have these safe returns that are paying just a little bit probably over inflation, okay? So you're not really making that much. Uh, so especially um, look at a young investor such as myself, you might want to consider something more like a 70-30 or personally, I think something more like an 80-20 works better for me. Bonds can even be sold um, between investors back and forth long after the company originally borrowed the money, okay? Because um, you have all the way up until the maturity date to sell these around. And bonds are inversely correlated with interest rates, okay? So inversely, that means opposite. When interest rates rise, then the prices of bonds are going to fall. And um, the other way around too, if interest rates fall, then bond prices are going to rise. So this is where the risk tends to lie when you're investing in bonds, okay? Um, let's picture it like this, guys. Let's say you buy a bond for $1,000 face value, and this pays a coupon rate of 3%. And now, interest rates were to increase. Let's make a drastic example here, and let's say that interest rates increase by a percent. And let's say we're cent for cent correlated here. So now your new bond yields will be 4% compared to this previous 3%. Well, being an open market, right? Um, people aren't going to want to spend this $1,000 on the 3% bond when they can go over here and spend $1,000 and get 4%, right? Because they're going to make more money there. So um, this price is uh, reflected from the demand. So now this bond of 3% price is going to fall because people don't want to buy it all because the interest rates rose. So it's inversely correlated. So now that you understand how bonds work, I'm pleased to tell you that just how um, there's ETFs for stocks in the stock market, you can also get ETFs or exchange traded funds for bonds. 
What these ETFs are, are funds that you can invest in that hold a basket of a bunch of things. So in this case, they're holding a bunch of bonds all in one fund. So you're getting maximum diversification, which is reducing your risk really on something in this case, bonds, which really has some of the best risk out there. And on top of that, these ETFs um, have the advantage of being cheaper than something like a mutual fund because the management expense is a lot cheaper. So you save money there too. You also get the advantage of investing for cheaper, okay? Because um, with bond ETFs, you have a minimum requirement for investing. Because when you buy individual bonds, they usually have a face value that's $1,000 or $100. When um, considered an ETF, for example, this is a way um, you can get into the bond market for way less money. And on top of this, brokerages also want to make money too, right? So they can have a high markup for this, often being 2 to 3% markup. So these are also good benefits that ETFs have. Bond ETFs operate like a closed-ended fund, which means you're not purchasing these bonds right from the supplier. So there needs to be a buyer and a seller for any trade to take place there. With bond funds, they don't reveal their underlying holdings that they have all the time, okay? They might do this once or maybe twice per year. So you have a lack of transparency with what you're investing in with bond funds. On the other hand, bond ETFs, they reveal their holdings daily, okay? On a daily basis, so you can have confidence and feel comfortable knowing where your money's going. Now, to me, one of the best perks that you get with bond ETFs is the fact that you get paid more frequently. With individual bonds, you get your coupon payment annually or maybe semi-annually, okay? Twice a year. However, with bond ETFs, you're entitled to monthly payments, okay? So this can really help you out uh, depending on what your goals are, and it can also increase the rate at which your money compounds with these monthly payments. Now, this is all because of the fact that the fund is simultaneously investing in so many different types of bonds with different maturity dates. At any given time, you know, bonds in the fund are maturing, okay, which is giving the fund this money so they're able to make these monthly payments out to its investors because there isn't one single maturity date. So what this does, it makes the fund more liquid, meaning you're able to get in and out of positions you can buy and sell more easy and get access to the bond market that way. One of my favorite ETFs for bonds is the iShares uh, Universe Bond Index, ticker symbol XBB on the TSX. Now, this is a Canadian fund right on the Toronto Stock Exchange. Um, they have about 99% Canadian bonds, but there are lots of indexes out there, guys, just tons and tons of indexes. All you have to do is really do a quick Google search and get a list of options that you might want to invest in for yourself. So really, bond ETFs are a great option to add an addition to your portfolio that's going to help diversify your money. It's going to reduce your risk, and also it's going to save you some money compared to investing in bonds through other methods. Obviously, you do have some risk as if interest rates were to rise or increase. In theory, you're not guaranteed to get all your money back, right? Because there's not a single maturity date. If the price of the ETF were to fall and you had to sell, then you're going to be at a loss there. Now, I'm not a financial advisor or anything. As you guys know, my videos, they're just here for your entertainment, for your education purposes only. Um, but with that being said, unless you're investing in some pretty risky bonds, then this is just very unlikely. So with that, we're at the end of today's video. I was pleased that I was able to share this alternate method of investing for a safe income. I hope you enjoyed it. It was short and sweet, but bond ETFs are definitely something that you should consider adding to your portfolio to act kind of as a safety net for your investments. If you like this video, then please smash that like button and also subscribe to my channel. I post regular content for tons of uh, videos, you know, topics related to this. So if you don't want to miss any of those, then hit the bell icon. And you'll get notified for all my future videos. Okay, I talk about all things personal finance, stock market, wealth building, investing, um, debt management, coaching, all that good stuff, guys. So for that, Boss Financial is the place. And I'm also on Instagram too. So go ahead, get out those phones and follow me at Boss Financial channel there on Instagram. And once again, as always, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. Stay positive and see you next time.